Good evening, and welcome to another edition of On The Hill Media. Today, we have a special guest with us. We have Ms. Michelle Wright, District 25 candidate for delegate. Ms. Wright, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes, well, actually, I've been in government for 30 years, and I began my career um, in Washington, D.C. as a United States Capitol Hill police. And I was working at midnight um, during the night and then going to grad school in the day. And then in the state of Maryland, I entered into county government in Montgomery County. And I worked in Montgomery County for eight years with community development block grant. I was a planner. I worked with landlord and tenant affairs and then also with business and economic development. And through that experience in Montgomery, I worked a tremendous amount in the biotech industry and, and helped to develop a lot of the I-270 corridor with the Shady Grove Life Science Center and bringing some of the very first companies that came there like Otsuka Pharmaceutical at that time, Life Technologies and BioReliance and some other companies that are, that are in that area. Then I um, went from there to Prince William County and worked for nine years as Assistant Director of Economic Development there and did a lot of job creation as well as adding to the economy in that county with uh, relocating a 100,000 square foot back office billing facility for AT&T, expanding the federal systems division of IBM, and also moved a company from Rockville called the American Type Culture Collection. And I lived in Maryland for all 30 of my years and I was eroding our tax base very successfully and I started um, making entrees to the state of Maryland and to the officials in the state of Maryland and attended a conference and began to push my desire to do what I did best in business and economic development and increasing jobs and increasing the tax base of communities and the desire to do that here at home, what I do best. So I began working in the state of Maryland uh, for a 15-year history with the Department of Business and Economic Development. And in that department, I was the director of what was called industry sector assistance. And there was a study that was done that determined which industries were the most likely to grow in the state of Maryland. And they included finance, um, warehouse and distribution, biotechnology, telecommunications, information technology, aerospace, minority business, um, <clears throat> agriculture, aquaculture, tourism, film and the arts. And we did a sector study um, for the state of Maryland. It's called the Strategic Directions Document. And to this day, it's the only strategic plan for economic development that the state has. And I marshaled and um, took control and created that effort um, as well as um, provided a, a final report for our Maryland General Assembly on how we could make Maryland more competitive and what we could do to make Maryland more business friendly. And from that worked with the University of Maryland, our business community, conducted statewide roundtables and determined some legislation that could provide assistance with an R&D tax credit and opening up our federal facilities to small businesses so they could utilize their machinery, tools, and equipment to enhance their you know, market and their products going into the market. So I've, I've worked um, very extensively in the state of Maryland in the Business and Economic Development Office and I was also uh, the director of technology marketing for the state and looking at expanding uh, technology advancements in the state and worked with a couple of programs called the Challenge and Investment um, Programs, which are grant programs that provide technology assistance for small businesses that are in those arenas. So I've, I've certainly enjoyed working with that and I work with the Department of Housing and community development with home ownership programs and work with also foreclosure counseling through the Department of Housing and Community Development. And most recently, I work with the Governor's Office of Minority Affairs as the BRAC coordinator, which is the base realignment and closure. And I provided assistance to small minority disadvantaged women-owned and veteran-owned businesses with securing contracts that were related to BRAC, both state and federal, uh, to increase the number of jobs that small businesses would bring to the table once they received the contracts. They would be in a posture where they could hire more people and enhance our tax base.
what would you like to accomplish within your first year in office? I think one of the greatest missions that I, I um, enjoy in my public service is, is first of all working and connecting with the community, uh, with the homeowners, with the businesses, with the nonprofit organizations. Sometimes the government can be a maze uh, for people to navigate. There are a tremendous n amount of programs. When, I was in the housing department, for example. We had 36 financing programs, from small business loan programs, to furnace programs, to indoor plumbing programs, to well and septic programs, to lead paint programs for landlords. And in a lot of instances, the programming is there, the funding is there, but there's no outreach so that people know that these programs and services are available. Uh, take, for example, in 2003, I was working with um, a mortgage program that we have in the state of Maryland. Minority participation was only at about 10%. Prince George's County, in a 30-year time frame of that program, may have had about seven you know, loans that were closed. It offered very low interest rate, down payment and closing cost assistance, um, free uh, counseling for a person if they had to get their housing counseling in order to participate in the program. But it also gave them financial literacy education as to how to manage you know, their household once they purchased it. I worked with that program from 2003 to 2007 and did over a billion dollars in first-time home mortgages. Just in the year 2007, um, in Prince George's County, there were 655 um, mortgages that closed. Traveling throughout the state, I also noticed that other areas and jurisdictions that we worked with, like Howard, Montgomery, Anne Arundel, they had housing fairs um, annual, and we would be invited to participate and provide information on all of the different programs that we had, all 36 financing programs, and give technical assistance to the community as to how you um, take advantage of those programs. And I worked with the county to have our first um, housing uh, conference at the Sports and Learning Center, and they've done maybe two or three in that period in time. I worked also very extensively with the faith community here and the collective banking group and uh, church organizations like First Baptist of Glen Arden and uh, the Jericho City of Praise and um, a lot of the, the churches that are here in the uh, 25th district, you know, Riverdale Baptist and, and Reed Temple, and letting people know through this collective banking group they would host these uh, housing forums and conferences also, and to provide for the community information on home ownership as well as home ownership preservation. And the preservation of home ownership is if a person finds themselves getting behind in their mortgage or they find that they lose their job and they're no longer able to pay it and they unfortunately could be faced with the potential of a foreclosure and providing the information that they need to make the critical decisions as to how they move forward with their, their personal home economy. In the upcoming year, the state has potentially $1 billion in cuts they have to make. What do you propose that we do? I think we're certainly faced with some very tough economic decisions and economic times. Our leadership has already had to make some tough decisions with furloughs and and so forth like that. I think on the energy usage side, we may be able to cut down some of the lights, turn off the computers, see what can we save uh, prudently from that. And I know fleet vehicles and so forth like that, that were take-home vehicles, some of them are no longer take-home vehicles where we could save on you know, fuel charges and, and maintenance fees and things like that. We can take a look line item agency by agency to determine which programs that we find are, are functional, what things are working, and try to cut back a little on the program side. It's always uh, difficult when you're looking to fiscally manage in a prudent way to look at your human uh, capital and having to cut back on um, anything that's um, prevalent to your, your employees. So I think we'd be looking at a lot of different line items. Most of the agencies have the capacity to kind of scrub themselves down and determine where they can improve and increase on efficiencies. What is needed to boost job creation here in the state of Maryland and in your district? Well, the, the president has um, put forth